camping's really boring at all. There's nothing to do. You sit in the woods, is that all you do? Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. In this video, I want to talk about some of the misinformation that is commonly expressed about tent camping. Now, some of this information may come from RV dealers or RV salesmen or RV owners that want to justify their purchase of an expensive RV. But a lot of this misinformation comes from people that have very limited camping experience. They may have taken an unplanned trip or two that turned into a disaster, but for whatever reasons, they've decided they don't ever want to go camping again. And they feel the need to justify this decision. Now let's examine several incorrect assertions about tent camping. Several non-campers claim that tent camping is not safe, suggesting that either dangerous people or dangerous animals will harm you. But the truth is, tent camping is one of the safest of all recreational activities. A recent national study examined emergency room admissions for various recreational activities and found that bicycling, swimming, boating, hiking, and most other recreational activities accounted for far more injuries than did tent camping. To further reduce your risk of being harmed by dangerous people, you should only stay in large, popular, supervised campgrounds that have an entrance control station and gates that lock after the park is closed at night. You won't have problems with bears in most campgrounds around the country, but in bear habitats, you'll need to take a few precautions. Try to finish your final meal of the day before dark, wash your dishes, then take a bath, put on clean clothes, and store your food and dirty clothes in your car at all times. Never bring food or candy into the tent, and don't let children bring it into the tent. These same precautions will help you avoid problems with raccoons, skunks, squirrels, and other small animals. To avoid problems with venomous snakes, stay on marked trails, be careful around water's edge, and always carry a flashlight after dark. Campfires have contributed to more injuries than anything else, so when working around the fire, be especially careful and supervise children closely. If you're ever injured in a large popular campground, the campground host will have the knowledge, the communication equipment, and the backup necessary for rapid treatment. A second popular but incorrect assertion is that anything you leave laying unsecured around your campsite is likely to be stolen. But the truth is, large, popular, supervised campgrounds are extremely secure. I have stayed in over 300 different campgrounds and have spent hundreds of nights in them and never had anything stolen from my campsite. In contrast, I have just spent a few nights in hotels and have had over a half a dozen things stolen from me in these hotels or their parking lots. Several incorrect assertions about camping center around cleanliness. For example, many people complain about the lack of facilities in the woods when most large popular campgrounds have very nice bathrooms with hot showers, flush toilets, and laundry facilities. In addition, most large popular campgrounds offer water and electric hookups at each campsite, so there's no reason why you can't stay just as clean in your campsite as you do at home. 
Several people will complain about things that could make you uncomfortable without recognizing the fact that there are easy solutions to those problems. And sometimes they'll punctuate these comments by saying something to the effect that camping is supposed to be roughing it. When the fact is, all camping books written over the last 100 years have tried to explain how to make camping more comfortable. For example, many vocal anti-campers complain about the discomfort of sleeping on the cold, hard ground without recognizing the fact that it's very easy to assemble a very comfortable bed. We have a very comfortable bed, and as a matter of fact, I sleep better in our tent than I do in our bed at home. Hot weather could be uncomfortable, but you can deal with it by traveling north in the hot summer months and then camping locally in the fall, winter, and spring. You can also deal with hot weather by looking for mountaintop shady campgrounds with lakes or rivers to swim in and by soaking cotton garments at night and having a tent fan. You can deal with cold weather by camping camping locally in the spring, summer, and fall, and then traveling south during the winter. If you live in a cold climate, you probably should invest in a canvas tent and a tent heater. We use an electric heater because most campsites here in the southeastern United States, have electricity 12 months a year. You'll also want to invest in some good winter garments and learn how to layer them effectively. The easy way to deal with rain is just to buy a good quality tent and a secondary shelter. On rainy days, you can spend time going to theaters and museums. Many people complain about bugs and mosquitoes, but I've camped extensively throughout the eastern United States and almost never have had a problem. The only place that I've had problems has been in the northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. If you have an insect or mosquito problem, you can easily buy insect repellent sprays, a bug-resistant clothing, head nets, and citronella candles. To enhance your comfort around camp, you'll want some good, comfortable camp chairs and a couple of hammocks. Another line of misinformation suggests that you cannot cook good-tasting foods when you're camping. But the truth is you can cook almost anything in your campsite that you could cook at home and it will taste much better in your campsite. For example, you can cook steak, hamburgers, hot dogs, pork chops, small chicken parts, and many other foods directly over the campfire. You can wrap several more foods such as corn on the cob, potatoes, broccoli, and apples in aluminum foil and steam them directly on the fire. If you have two or three small nesting pots, you can warm canned foods, boil pasta, boil rice, and even deep fry fish. A frying pan allows you to fry bacon, sausage, fish, and several other foods. And a Dutch oven allows you to make biscuits, brownies, peach cobbler, lasagna, and even pizza. Now you could cook these foods over your campfire, but a little $50 two burner camp stove would make cooking so much easier. A final line of misinformation suggests that you can't have any fun when you tent camp. 
But the truth is, being able to tent camp allows you to do many fun things that you could not otherwise do at home. For example, many state and federal parks have swimming pools or nice beaches on lakes and rivers where you can beat the summer heat. Many of these parks also offer playgrounds for the children and great fishing holes for those such as my wife who enjoy catching fish. Some parks offer boat rentals. Some of these parks offer great hiking trails where you can hike up to a waterfall or some scenic overlook. Many parks offer nature centers where you can learn about plant and animal ecology and offer lots of programs for children. You can visit a variety of historic sites and buildings and learn how people used to live back in the 1800s. And you can find a wide variety of unique shops, restaurants, festivals, concerts, athletic events, museums, and amusement parks located near many campgrounds. Many parks now offer free Wi-Fi so you could watch movies on your iPad. Or you could just relax around the campsite, take a nap in the hammock, listen to music, or read a good book. Before concluding, let me mention a few benefits of tent camping since those that are quick to point out the negatives rarely ever tell you about the positives. First of all, tent camping allows you to travel around the country economically and visit a many attractions that you could not possibly visit if you had to spend every night in an expensive hotel. Although a good camping kit will cost you about $1,000, you'll pay for this after about 7 to 10 days of camping, and every night that you camp thereafter, you'll save at least $100 a night. The more you tent camp, the more you will learn about how to live independently in the outdoors without electricity and the other modern-day conveniences that we've come to depend upon. And the more you camp, the more you will come to appreciate God's beautiful creation and the plants and animals that dwell therein. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you to better understand some of the arguments against tent camping, and be prepared to respond to those arguments. For more information about how to make your camping trips more enjoyable, please visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and read my book titled Basic Tent Camping. A link to my website is included in the description below. Remember... Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go camp camping. Very good. Stop.